cool. All right, we're recording. Yeah. I want to make sure there's no uh, – yeah, I don't hear any br- breathiness. If you hear any breathiness, let me know or like anything weird. <laughs> we're good. No, you're good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear anything? <laughs> The whole episode. Is no, just, no, no, no. Hey, this is our uh, <laughs> podcast. It's Mike and Steve eat food. <laughs> yeah, this is ASMR. Fucking- <laughs> yeah. We occasionally fart on Mike too, depending on what we've eaten, but we just are going to eat food and breathe heavily afterwards into the mic. Pretty much just make sure the, the mics are picking shit up, right? Yeah. Everything but talking. <laughs> that would be our podcast. Just anything we want to do. Ambient noise. Yeah, anything. Well, it's very, yeah, it's open-minded. <laughs> just no conversation at all. Um, unless it's different animals, like not, not maybe other languages. Um, yeah, I don't know any. I, I kind of know German. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Shit, so we, do you. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we, we took German class. Not Were we in the same class? No. One time? Never? No, but we did have Frau. We had the same teacher, and I mean, man, if there was an award for for teachers that just had kids just um just a step ahead of her in a way, and just t- abuse of their power over her or something like, I mean, that her life was hell because of the kids, right? Oh, it was terrible. But she brought it every single class. Just did the most crazy. Name a couple things that your class did. In a uh, Frau Feller ass German class. Oh, dude, I had a have one buddy who told her that he had an IEP. Yeah, <laughs> she, uh, she didn't ask for any paperwork. Oh my, it, that's it. It was that simple. <laughs> um, so she would help him on like tests and quizzes and shit. Anything else? There's, dude. There's so much, right? Dude, I'm sure you can think of uh, stand up and shout. <laughs> stand up and shout. Every if everyone does it, what are they gonna do? It's like yeah. that scene in Breakfast Club. Like if we, if I do it, we all do it. Yeah, to, yeah. Or I don't know. They, or, I, I, I think that's something like the quote. But um, in in my class, I remember one of the kids, uh, one of the Lang brothers. He's a cop now. I probably shouldn't tell us. No, it's not that bad. He had yeah. like the watch with the TV, and then we would have like cowboys versus Indian, like paper ball fights oh, and we, yeah. they would just break out in the middle of class um this is i'll tell one funny story uh there was a kid travis uh over remember yeah, yeah, him? Yeah. i'm saying everyone's name full names maybe i shouldn't do that that's not a big deal mm, no, maybe good. eventually if we had a popular i would be I careful say it. yeah i'll say the names um travis over was in her class and we he used to like hide in the beginning of class and it would be like volist heinrich was the game <laughs> And then Frau would be like, Vol, and you would have, you were supposed to say each thing in German. Yeah. So you wouldn't be like, is he in the class? Is he under the desk? You'd have to say, well, I don't know, but you would, whatever it is in German, you would say it. And then be like, no, she'd check. And it, dude, it was silly. And it would take like eight minutes sometimes. It was a long game. And we just, you know, that was a part of class. Well, one day Travis was absent. And I yelled out, like, Voest Heinrich, and we're looking for him, <laughs> and he's not there. And then I'm like, hey, there he is. He's out in the bushes because she was right by the courtyard. So she she goes out, and she's looking for him, and she's yelling, Heinrich, Heinrich, Travis, Tra-, you know, whatever. Get back in. And then and then she writes him up. After, after nobody ever gets written up in her class, she wrote him up like an office referral for skipping class yeah. because he wouldn't come in. <laughs> In the Voest Heiner game. Dude, um remember he wasn't there. Josh Pyle. Josh Pyle, yes. He he took he hit our final exam. because she was a oh. roaming teacher. Like with the cart and shit. Yeah, yeah. He fuck he at the beginning of class he just took the exam, <sighs> hit it in one of those pocket desks. Dude. And then at the end end of class, she's like Josh walks over to the desk and and just pulls it out and goes, Frau, is this what you were looking for? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, that that kind of stuff happened all the time with her, dude. It was the floor is lava. Oh, the floor. Is Everyone lava. would play that. <laughs> Stand on the desks. Stand up and shout was the fucking best. Yeah, that was that was <clears throat> crazy. Um, so moving forward, what yeah. were we even talking about right before that? I don't know. We just started the episode and got into German. We, did we even make it like one sentence in? Uh, it was talking. Oh, the oh, foreign it languages. Was, it was foreign languages yeah. and ASMR. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we have a podcast. Um. Considering the fact that at least I kind of see this podcast turning into once we get our bearings down production wise and that kind of stuff, it'll probably be a a guest based show more times than not or whenever we can just interest, whatever, like a varying of interesting any type of people. We have different networks between 
different like groups of people, but yeah. anybody we could get on the show that would be a fun conversation, we would be down to have on essentially. Pretty much whatever we want to talk about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, no set category no. of what we're going to do or where we're going to go. Whatever we feel is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to listen, you can. Yeah. Who gives um, a fuck? Yeah. So <laughs> we do have something we will get into for sure in the first episode. And, and, and who knows? What will happen? I have no idea with that. We haven't really discussed a whole lot as far as anytime we start discussing stuff, it's almost kind of like, I don't think we should pigeonhole it to trying to be a certain amount of time, anything like that. And we even thought it would be instead of even just discussing this on our own at end, we should just kind of, as we go talk about the adjustments maybe we're making or, or whatever, as we kind of figure it out. Um, right now we have our name set at to infinity and beyond, um, which just, I know when I say it, maybe that's, and just like that, it's not our name <laughs> yeah. anymore. I didn't get an applause, nothing. It, 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 no. To, to, like pre show talking about it, it sounded pretty good. No, I still like it. It's yeah. still got to, we'll it sounds good. It. Yeah. We'll um, stick with it for now. Yeah. Just basically anything we want to do, uh, anywhere it can go, I guess, legally. And, uh, yeah, that's the way it's going to be. Or maybe illegally. Cause yeah, we don't exactly illegally. know the rules. Yeah, and Steve uh, has has done audio engineer work and uh, went to school for that uh, kind of stuff, right? I mean, yeah. You know, so yeah. the the quality, if it the will content get there. sucks, the quality will be good. It will, yeah. It'll it, so he'll learn quick with that stuff. I've done podcasts. Uh, I did a podcast before, um, an MMA based one. So uh, yeah, I what do we want? We we should wait a little bit to get into the into the main topic that we were going to discuss towards the end. I don't know. I think we kind of just jump into it. You want to just jump yeah, into think, it? Cause that's, oh yeah. Cause we have to talk about, yeah. we have to set it up, set yeah. it up and talk about it. And it's a hell of a first topic. For yeah. Our first episode. Of yeah. a podcast. It's nice to have, it's nice to have a little bit of drama. Yeah. I think I, I enjoy a little bit of drama. So, um, yeah, I was a topic of a podcast not long ago, or I got brought up on a, on a podcast for the latest hobby that I've picked up, which is one of many. Yeah. But this one, I, I never was ever able to play guitar. Um, I played, I played some trumpet in school, but by the time I was in middle school, I stopped practicing and, uh, I never really learned a whole lot. And that it, it was always difficult for me to like juggle things. Like I tried learning to do drums once and it was just a pain. I wouldn't say anything musical comes too naturally to me. Uh, especially there's always a clunkiness in the beginning of learns, learning something where you got to be really relaxed and just yeah. kind of not thinking too heavily about it. And uh, I, uh, the, a girl I was dating at the time, it's a year and a half ago or so um, was going away to uh, Japan for to do study abroad stuff. And I was like, I'm going to start learning to play guitar every day while she's gone. I'm going to try to practice for 30 minutes, at least maybe up to an hour. And that was yeah. kind of the idea. And I started practicing and I mean, it was basic dude. I went into, I had it, a bard and acoustic guitar that was really hard to play. And I went and I just got like a beginner book, like, and it was playing like fucking Mary had a, like the first song that actually sounded like, Oh, this is kind of cool was green sleeves. You know, like, like <laughs> yeah. I didn't do anything cool at first. And I had my buddy, Steve, Steve Kirk, who we, who we graduated with as well. Um, he's a really good guitar player and uh, a really good friend of mine. And I had him help me out with some beginner stuff. Like what would be the best direction? Now he doesn't do really much rhythm and he doesn't do any singing with rhythm. He's a much more lead lead type stuff and not, not an open chord acoustic kind of guy in that. Like he plays classical stylings, metal, and just so kind of complex stuff. Very or, technical or noisy. Yeah. Anything but, that style of going to an open mic and doing cover songs. <laughs> yeah. So on my own, outside of my assigned, like what I wanted to learn, um, I, I wanted to learn a song to sing along to. So on my own, I would just try and play the chords to something with no idea of what is anything. And once I got to the point where I could actually play the chords through a song and sing it so I could hear it in my head, and it, at the time it sounded good enough to me to be like, I learned that, you know, 
I I posted it on I posted it online. I like doing that. Yeah, I, you just wanted to show your achievements and whatever your progression. It is. Yeah. It's 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 just that's what you do. You share the things you do. The share you share the vacations you go on. You share your, the thoughts you have. At that point in time, I had been playing guitar for like three months practically every day and i don't think i made a single post about it or if i did it was like once or twice yeah. and I, and then when i was able to play a song and my goal was i just wanted to go to open mics and be able to be like an open mic guitarist where you go up there and if they're expecting an open mic and new people i won't stand out as being like oh my god what am i listening to this well, is yeah, crazy like yeah, it's people coming in with an open mind right kind of amateur amateur people showing up no one's looking for jimmy page to be up on the fucking stage exactly or it it, it could sound bad it could be a place as you're learning yeah if i'm in the learning stages it's normal right i mean the, you got to start somewhere and um you know it's just something you do i did stand-up comedy for a long time and everybody posts their first sets their second sets i did i posted all of my every time i had a new bit i wanted to post it and then once you do it for a while you're like god that's so stupid and it gets to the point where you get so much so that all the veteran comics always talk shit on the new guy who yeah. posts everything it's a cycle and i think that's the end of the spectrum that the podcast people are on. It's like, why would you ever want to put yourself out there with an awful product? But they just immediately jump to the end instead of seeing the beginning or and what, the progression. Even if through. there's no progression, I'm not just going to throw them. I'm putting myself out there. It's also good accountability. You know, a lot of people do that with weight loss stuff and it yeah. helps them. They start, they start posting their, their weight every week. They're, they post like they have goals. Like in three months, I'm going to do a before and after picture, yeah. you, whatever it is. And it's a, accountability and i've always used that type of motivation um for whatever reason it, it's worked extremely well to me I, as a matter of fact almost everything i've gotten into was, was i had strong accountability not just in myself but because i had said that that's what i was going to do or i had put it out there in a way like this is what i'm doing this is what i'm going to do and things come into fruition a lot better when I do that. And yeah, it's my life. Like I post things on, on, yeah. on Instagram, you know, every other day, every few days, sometimes daily. It's like, I'm going to post me learning a new song that I've been practicing. <laughs> I don't have much free time. So if I'm spending all of my free time doing this, that you're going to get a lot of dog pics. Now that I have a dog, <laughs> you're just going to get my life. Sometimes I'll post a picture at the MMA gym three days in a week you don't at, like it unfollow me it's, at least every sunday yeah i'm not getting <laughs> paid to post stuff i'm doing it for fun i like it i like having the photos whatever it, i don't it, it is what it is as yeah. far as that goes a lot of people do it um no well, everybody does it yeah to an extent there's something um i like that i like the accountability of it and and um that being said uh I guess that leads me, I guess I'll just say, yeah, eventually I got to the point where I was doing some open mics, practicing it, clearly the worst person at the open mic, but you should be when you're the first time or the second timer. Yeah. And I felt fine with it. And it was, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I liked that rush. It's like a safe rush. You know, you know? I will, I will say this. You, you jumped into it very soon, like posting videos and posting pictures and stuff like that. And it takes fucking balls, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I know it's not good when I'm doing that. <laughs> um, you know, I guess before I say too much, in because I'm going to start saying things as a reaction to the topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should just start playing clips, right? Yeah. And, and then we can always talk and pause or whatever and, and go back into it. Now, um, I will say that we might get in trouble for, for posting or playing the audio of the second clip because it is part of a paid podcast, but I don't really care. We yeah. can always, if something happens, we can edit it out later. Yeah. And it'd be and, funny if they cared that much, but they might, they yeah. might. And we'll talk about why they might care. Well, you just did, but yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Fuck so it. I'm not worried about it, but, um, yeah, we have the audio set up in a way that, uh, we can always take it out and do a re-edit of it and it won't be a big deal. Yeah, we'll just put like a, like a yeah. a beep noise over top of it. Yeah, we, <laughs> yep. And we can rename it to the Robin jo Joe Show or a bunch of pussies. Yeah, yeah as yeah. that would be the rename of the episode of one if that happened. Yeah, you know? or like hide and seek. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's do it. All right. This is the first clip. Mm -hmm. This This is where they first brought you up. Okay. And first, kind of saw your Instagram videos and. They were just kind of talking about it, and, and you'll hear. Yeah. 
Oh shit. <laughs> we want well. <laughs> <laughs> you need to pay in one ninety nine to you got this? I, knew, I, was, I was about to say, we're also going to experience our first set of technical difficulties because it'll be our first time playing an audio clip through this. We got it, though. It sounded okay earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Just got to pause yeah. it real quick. I'm going to enjoy narrating audio. Pro- it's probably going to be a plus in the show. The more, as long as my mic's on, I can make the most of it, I think. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy every audio error we have. Yeah. Just, just stop talking for a second. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're good. Cool. I think. Let's see. Yep. All right. Let's play the clip. All right. This is a clip of the first episode. I have heard this one, by the way. Yeah. I have not heard the other one, but I've heard this one. Well, this is this is the one that I brought to your attention. Yeah, that's right. Because anytime, anytime they ever talk about you, yeah. I mean, we're obviously friends. So anytime they ever talk about you, whether it's on the 98 Rock Morning Show or... The Robin Joe show. You you hear it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, people will text me, but this one in particular, you were the one, ironically, that brought it to my attention first because Steve is not involved in the comedy scene. I, that's what I needed to preface as well. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of that, that's kind of something that we kind of glanced over is yes. how this all got brought to your attention is because I listen to the Robin Joe show. Yes. And heard that clip of them basically shitting on you <laughs> yeah. for what you wanted to do yeah 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 <laughs> the, so <laughs> the first clip's not that uh, i guess the first clip has the most venom okay and then the second clip is when it kind of okay. gets well, well, I haven't wh- heard that one but yeah so that's what happened i did comedy for uh a while and i knew rob and joe through that and um yeah, I haven't done it in a few years. I don't know them that well, but I saw Rob maybe like eight months ago at a show I run. And, uh, I, you know, I've always had a friendly enough relationship with them. I, I like them. They're, they're all right. Yeah, fuck it. Let's listen to yeah. it. We have a, a, a friend. Actually, I think he's – actually, he hasn't been on the show, but he's been discussed on the show very, very early. Mike Turpin. Pause. pause. Yes. Okay. That's what, I'm going to say pause a lot. All because right, right. that. But, but pause on that <laughs> because I have been on the show. That's that's I was on the show and it's funny because the reason I was on the show is because Joe had said some shit that was like, you know, similarly, it was like borderline offensive in a way where you feel like you got to say something to him. Like, you don't want to just let him talk like that about you. So I was on their show a while ago because I, I was dating a comic and we were at a show together. And the day I met him, he was like, Oh, you guys will never work. Well, they Whatever. actually, they actually touch on that. And the, okay. So move <laughs> on. But he did say that. To, it's funny that, that he said that. And I was like, I was on your, your stupid. You don't remember <laughs> that. Anyway, go on, go on. And Mike Turpin, I don't know if you've seen any of his um, Facebook videos of him playing the guitar. Yeah. But, He's fucking horrible. I don't. I, I think it's. I don't think it, he knows it, right? Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I think he's just showing. You know, someone will show their their their, their progression, fat and they'll show their progression of their weight loss. Okay, and they're still fat, but you're like you're doing better. You're, you're so you're rewarding them. So I hear that because Katie always. I'm gonna pause there because that's kind of what you were touching on. You, yeah, you were setting yeah. goals and and showing progression. Yeah, and, and I exactly, and I agree, agree completely with with Rob. I mean, he didn't he didn't correct Joe and say I'm not fucking awful or for, uh, fucking horrible, like because he probably thinks I am. But he he gets it. It's not shocking to him that someone would, would post that. Yeah. It sounds like, yeah. or you know, so I, I get where he's coming because that was the thing was that eventually it became, you know, that it was. They both thought I had bad. It was weird that I reacted the way I did. Yeah. But I, Rob, Rob makes sense. I agree with Rob. Right. Yeah. Like, hey, listen to this, and she plays. He's it. no Leslie Pearl. Oh, he's he he makes Leslie Pearl sound like fucking Stevie Wonder. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I hear it, and I'm like, God, I would never fucking put that out. It's so ho- horrible. It's hard even sometimes to recognize the song that he's singing. Right. And I like Mike, but. I just want to say it is horrible and you're right, but you're, I mean, this is the thing though. He's saying that and there is a big flaw in shit talking when you say I, you can't even recognize the song. It's not like they're saying I'm playing some Beatles song and you're like, I don't hear it. I'm playing songs you don't fucking know, dummy. That's, that's true. I never <laughs> play songs that anybody knows. 
that. So, I mean, this is why I get where it's because there are particulars when I hear this and they're just triggers like the everything up until that point is fine. It's funny. It, it, it's whatever. But he says it in a way that is pretty inaccurate there. Like, yeah, I'm not playing fucking. It, you you know. could play the original and they wouldn't recognize it. They wouldn't know what song you they were wouldn't playing. know the original for sure. And a lot of them they might not like. They might sound awful to them. Like a lot of the music. Yeah, the originals are probably horrible. Ho- a lot of them, especially if you're judging by like singing quality and content. Yeah. You might think it's pretty, pretty awful. Um, but go on. The, I mean, clearly, by the fact you're bringing this up, we didn't have. Well, to. no, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a point. <laughs> okay. Then oh. I know his favorite Here comic is Andy Kaufman, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking, I wonder if he's just fucking with us. Right, to you know, because that Justin would do that too. By the way, yes, but you kind of almost get it if it was Justin. <laughs> but with Mike Turbin, I'm like, I what? Is this real? Is he fucking with us? Because obviously, you know, he's really horrible at this. Right, we'll have to download one of his or play one of his, his Facebook videos. Yeah, yeah, not this show, Robbie. We know that's a lot to ask, but uh. but anyway, I think about as soon as I said, you know, he's kind of having fun for himself at everybody else's expense. And it made me think about when Robbie plays these, because he even just said now, hey, I'm going to play, maybe I'll fuck with you on this 90s. You know? <laughs> I'm like, well, this is your, you own this property too, Robbie. You're a part of this. All right, that's it. They're talking about the shit that they do outside of the podcast after that. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so that's that. that's the full clip in its entirety. The first time they brought you up. So basically... It was just, it just triggered me that this guy who I don't know really well at all previously have mainly only had serious interactions with him that involve him saying some shit that made me want to stand my ground and be like, dude, why are you being a dick like that? Like, we, like, like, I'm not just going to let you be a dick to me. And, you know, so that was our previous interactions. And now, he said that. Well, he's a comic. I'm a comic. He roasted me. Uh, he had said that his girlfriend was listening to my, f- or was thing, his Facebook. And, uh, and well, and he said that it, it was so bad that he thought it was a put on. Now, here's the thing. If it was, it wouldn't, it's not. And, and it's not like, it's not like saying it because eventually it got into the fact we had a conversation and he was saying, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I didn't mean to, it's not really that. I don't know what it does. It doesn't make me feel worse about my playing at all because I feel pretty self-aware with it. And even if I'm not, it is what it is. That's the way I see it. It didn't shift my view of my playing or my ability um, much at all. It's just that it's not a put on and I've only been doing it. He didn't say this either. I had, at the time they talked about it, which is a few months ago, yeah, uh, I, I was like just over a year in. Yeah, it's probably, that's probably, we're probably a month, month and a half, maybe two well, months No, no, dude, this. that was like, no, it was like a Valentine's Day episode or something. Oh, it was? It goes back a ways. Uh, it doesn't even matter. I had just been playing over a year and a half. And it. I, I'm also singing, okay? And if you know anything about learning guitar or singing and learning things late in life, you know that they are both individually, A, things that a lot of people say you can't even do. Yeah. Like I've heard people who know how to play guitar tell people you have never played an instrument and you want to learn guitar and you want to be good at it. And you're like, if it's like a 50 year old, 60 year old, they're like, you should just learn keyboard. Yeah. You should just learn something a little bit less dynamic and, and has so much nuance. And learning guitar and then i'm also learning lead and rhythm i'm trying to teach myself rhythm on the side it's a lot to juggle and i'm constantly wanting to learn new songs so when you're constantly taking on new material you're getting good at at taking in new material and you're not getting good at perfecting anything you know so instead of ever polishing anything doing drills on my rhythm doing strumming drills. I'm just learning. My thing was just pulling up the tat, like the chords. I wouldn't even play to the song. I was never playing to a click, never playing to a beat. I was doing all sorts of things wrong, but I was learning and trying to teach myself. Singing is something that if you sound like me, typically, and you have like a (laughs) bass baritone type voice, it is extremely difficult to learn how to sing. You can do it. You just can't expect to do it in a short amount of time. I, I I get that he thinks it's odd to put myself out there when I suck that badly. And that's a very good point to make. You can talk about that on end if you want. Like, how do you feel about somebody posting something they're not any good at 
um, been putting themselves out there. And if that's something, you know, you, you would feel insecure about, or you wouldn't want to do, that's totally fine. And I'm totally good with, with defending or saying that I, I do that. But the fact that he thought it was a put on was like, okay, dude, if you were in front of me right now, I would fucking smack you. <laughs> like, not because you really deserve to get smacked, but because you're doing it to me yeah. and I'm going to fucking smack you. Like, why are you acting like that? And, and I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand why you would shit on somebody that is is something that they equate it to a weight loss progression like yeah why, why would you even shit on someone for doing something like that what i mean dude if it's, it's like, the it's the way yeah. joe is man if i don't know him that well but i this is the thing the only times i know him in my reality every time he steps foot in my reality he's always being some dick he's always has some shitty comment he's just he's got like a and he can't help it he doesn't even see himself that way because he, he gets like he does he, when when we talked he's like well, i don't know why that rubbed you wrong i guess i should leave uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying. So, 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 so I sent him a text. Yeah, a hold on. Let's just say, after after you heard and listened to this clip, what happened after that to prompt the next audio that we're yeah. going to listen to? Now, the thing is. Oh, so wait, hold on. You do you? I want to just. I have the text. You have it. Nothing's gonna, deleted. This nothing's is deleted. Word for word. Word for word. All right. Yeah. So. I say, hey, bro, tell Katie thank you for watching all my vids. Let her know if she ever wants that good dick, she knows where it's at. <laughs> Don't be shy, girl. Come get you some. A GRL, and you know, I mean, yeah. So, you know, that's what I said. Katie, who... Coming out of the gate strong. I guess is she's his fiance now, or they get... <sighs> uh, actually, I think at this point, they might be married. They might have just gotten married. Yeah. May, okay, they've been engaged let's for a just, while. Let's just, in terms of, hey, whenever they weren't this married gonna... yet. <laughs> <laughs> God, she's she's still in that decision mode. It wasn't she hasn't legal. fully committed. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So, I mean, I I don't know. He goes, "LOL, Jesus." I guess this means you don't like the criticism. I guess not liking your music supersede supersedes us saying what a good guy you are. Noted. Oh, really, motherfucker? Really? You you talked about how good of a guy I was. You you really made me out to be a fucking great dude. You you said we were a friend of the of ours, and and you forgot that I was on your fucking show for this same stupid bullshit to shit on to shit on me or whatever yeah. the fuck. And and now you're gonna say that it's just because of the you said I was so fucking bad you thought it was a put on and you're wrong. Of course I'm gonna fucking be all up in your shit about it. If it was right and it was a joke, I would be like, dude, chill, you ain't gotta be blowing up my spot. This is comedy gold. Like, <laughs> like if it was right, yeah, I would were, still be pissed at the motherfucker. If you were pulling a, <laughs> yeah. a coffin bit, you yeah, let dude, him in on it. Chill, this is my bit. Yeah, play into it. Like <laughs> tell people to come out to the open mics. I would like show up dressed like an FBI. FBI agent, like FBI agent Tony Clifton. But, um, no, um, yeah. So, so then he uh, says, "I said I didn't even mention that, like about about him saying the criticism." You know, fair enough. And then I said, "I was talking about your girl," which is true. Wait, you said that? <laughs> yeah, I said, yeah, yeah. I'm saying it. Like oh, wait, it's wait, wait, wait. You said my I didn't reply. Mention the criticism. <laughs> Uh, no, he said, yeah, he goes, I go, I didn't even mention that. I was talking about your girl. I'm at the tower doing a set every Sunday at eight. I'll treat her like a gem. Tell her what a good guy I am. He said, I'm a good guy. Yeah. So she's, she, she's interested in my stuff. I already you had just one. in. <laughs> you just her want fucking him to... fiance thinks I'm a good guy. So just relay that yeah. information to her. Just let her know, dude. Come on. <laughs> Hook a brother We're up. We're friends. <laughs> Ugh, friend of, what friend happened of to the sharing? show. <laughs> I'm your, you share your sugar with your neighbor, dude. Yeah, friend of the show, I Mike Turpin. Yes, the sweet of the loins. Um, then he goes, this is strange. Feel free to come right out and say your issue. If you think a line was crossed, I'm not interested in there being actual animosity. 
Oh, I guess he means come right at the issue if you think a line was crossed. Yeah, instead of just yeah. telling his girlfriend to come get the good day. I guess you think saying you aren't a very good musician warrants what you sent. Oh, really? That's how you worded it, you fucking idiot. Come on, man. Are you such a bullshitter. Do you read the bullshit that you send out here? He said, he said I guess... I guess you think saying you aren't a very good musician warrants what you... That's not what the fuck you said, dummy. No. That's not what he said. It's a put on. People are critical of me a lot more often than they are uh, of you. I don't private message them calling their mother a whore. And then he replied... And then an hour later... Hey, bro, I'm driving home feeling shitty. I'm sorry I crossed the line. I'm not interested in pissing people off, especially people I like. So he likes you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out. Oh, maybe we talked after this. So eventually we had a phone conversation. I, there is another text here. So then I said, I don't, this is, see, it's getting long, but we, we might as well say it. I yeah, don't hate you, fuck? dude. I'm not going to keep firing shots your way. It's just how I handle my shit. I know it's disrespectful what I said. Obviously, I'm just saying it to let you know I thought a line was crossed. I don't literally mean anything. It's just how I handle my shit. We're comics. I thought it was funny. I'm making a joke on your behalf because you did on mine. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. I can take it as far as I fucking want. I'll say whatever I want. It's because you did that. We're that's the law. That's yeah. where we're at. Yeah, he crossed. You can say what the fuck you want about me. I will say what I want about you. And this is for this is for comedy's sake, though. And it's also, not because I want to fuck his fiance. Also, let's keep in mind too. This was a private conversation that yes. they made. Public. He made it. That's right. He brought attention that that I don't go. That I don't go in their private messages. Oh, because no, you make the pro there. You go on your public podcast and talk about them. Yeah. Somebody you haven't even at, like talked to or been friends with in years, and we were never that close. Yeah, we well, always had a fucking little bit of tension at times. You know, he doesn't like my way or I don't like his. I don't. Well, it's a mutual. There's a mutual something. We both respect something about the other one. Yeah. And we both are triggered in a way about the but it don't, inevitable. Don't like something. About something. The other I don't yeah. know what it is, but I feel it. Maybe he doesn't. But I do. There's something about him. I, I, I don't know what. Um, but he's he's like smart and I respect things and he's funny. Um, you know, I like things about him. So it's a weird thing. Uh, and then I go, um, uh, I said, I don't literally mean anything. It's just how I handle my shit. People can poke and play, but I don't know. I'm a little crazy when I think I have a reason to fire at someone. That's true. I will take it to the next level, to, to the nth degree to let them know where it's headed. That's it. I just up the ante. You can pull out the Trump card and bury me. That's the way this back and forth shit works if you want. Yeah. And, um, and cause once again. It's within a text conversation. It's right. not, nothing has been put out into the public I could have sent that to his girlfriend. Or his yeah. I could have said, yeah. hey, baby, you want to come catch me at the tower anytime yeah. you want. If you wanted yeah, to Yeah, I could dick. say anything I want. <laughs> I could say bend her over and spread her ass cheeks. Then lick the cum. I could say that. Yeah. Why not? I could say lick my cum out of her ass. And then tell her she's engaged to me. Why not? <laughs> Fuck it. I can say it. I don't you, give a you shit. You can say it. What's it, he going to, I mean, what's going to happen? It's comedy. I think in a way, and this is a little private text. Clearly I'm doing it just to be funny or just to kind of give him yeah. shit. Like, because I'm pissed for a reason or whatever it is. I, but so then, um, I have been in similar situations and don't want to offend people. I like either. Not sure how fair my reply was, but it's nothing. This I is planned you speaking now. This is take, you saying. Yes. This. Yeah. It's nothing I had planned to take further, which is, I mean, I didn't want to keep going back and forth like that. Yeah. You didn't want him. to keep fucking with him through text yes. and him fucking with you through text. It's but just... they wound up talking about me on another Again, episode. A second time on a pay. But episode. it doesn't. All right. <laughs> Thanks. I wasn't writing that because I'm concerned about this continuing. It's because I'm genuinely sorry. Okay. We wound That's up good. talking on the phone. I might've called him. He might've called me. I, I think I probably called him. I don't know if that's a particular that matters. I try to be 100% accurate when I speak on shit like this. I will say this before we listen to the second audio. He says that you called him. I probably called him. I was okay. driving to Delaware. Mind you, this is the day. I know I'm a little on edge one day before an MMA fight. 
<laughs> I'm driving to Delaware to go to the weigh-ins for a fucking MMA fight, dude. I am prepared mentally for war, and I have all of this built up everything. I haven't trained in a few days. I know what I'm about to do. Yeah. It's intense. I'm driving to the weigh-ins. A lot can happen, and you're on edge, man. It's You just are on well, another I, level edge. Uh, I, it's no excuse, and I still stand by what I said. Reading it back, I know it's extreme, but if you know me... You know that that's it's nothing like wow, man. He really was sensitive to that. No, that's just the way I am. Yeah, you're an intense person. I will and, take it to the intense the degree. Th- like you're fucking owning it. Yeah, regardless yeah. of what you said, you are owning what you said and not excusing it. So. Right. We had a conversation. I did want to make it clear that like it was nothing personal. I did say that I would say go fuck your mother or whatever he said. Like yeah. like that's who I'm. He's like cuz I wouldn't it's not like I'm in their messages telling them to go fuck their mother. Well, I don't know. You said that about me. Yeah, go fuck your mother. I don't know. Tip for tat. It it works for me. In my world I can do that. In yours don't do it because you wouldn't want to be a bad guy. You wouldn't want to go out there and piss anybody off. No. Oh no, not Joe. Or you, talk or you, talk about a private no. conversation. Yeah, or what I mean anything yeah, it's like yeah, of course you don't want to make anyone feel bad, but then what the why are you the way you are? Why are you you then? Well, why like, aren't you a different person if you don't want to piss Mike Turpin off? Why do you even bring him up in the first place? Is yeah. it that impo- is it like that good of material? Like and I get that it had to do with with Joe doing his or his brother doing his bits. Nobody on there knows my music. They're not telling them where they can hear it. They're not even making it humorous. Dude, they should have loaded sound bites. They should have loaded sound bites and something, man. Something. It would have been better. Yeah. If you're looking at it for content for content's sake, this is the clip they said for a listeners who, A, they don't know me. So I was on the ep- episode a long time yeah, ago. The regular listeners ago. do not know yeah. me. This is like five, this is like a 10 year, eight year podcast. I don't know how long they've been doing it. They've been doing it for seven a while. or eight years, maybe. Yeah. I was on it a probably lot five. Than one episode. Yeah, I, I was probably like, that was probably five or six years ago. It was a while ago. I mean, whenever five you, years ago, whenever maybe. you started getting real heavy into the comedy. Yeah. So, you know, mm-hmm. that, uh, I mean, if you're just looking at it for content for content's sake, like if the good content of it, what's the good content? It's the the nature in which he shits on me. Yeah, that, right. That's the content. Ex- he can fucking shit on me and laugh about it because it's funny, but he doesn't. He's like, oh, what about a good guy? How, there's no he he sees absolutely nothing good about it. I hate having to specifically say what about it is cool or good or whatever because yeah. everyone sees things a different way. Rob saw what he saw. You said it takes the balls to go out there. I'm not gonna say what's admirable about posting some dog shit guitar. It's not like I'm doing some amazing thing by putting like by like practicing something and putting myself out there but i will say that he's only talking about the parts of it that are in that nature yeah. in my opinion i can say what the fuck i want and and that's just how i live my life we well, had a I, phone conversation go ahead i'll say this i think you have the right to the rebuttal because of how it all went down yeah and they talked about it Without bringing you into the conversation or even posting any audio of it. So it's completely out of context. Right. They just talk about how shitty it is and how awful it is and they hope it's a put on. But they don't even lead anybody to. I mean, I guess if you wanted to take the time and go on Instagram and search for Mike Turpin. Right. Then you'll find the videos. But honestly, if you're listening to the podcast, who the fuck's going to do that? Dude, I'm it's careful. a small percentage of people that are going to search that shit out right and be like and then form their own opinion about what you're actually doing because if if they did if they did go back to your page and look and be like okay this is what this guy's doing this is this is the equivalent to like they said a weight loss transformation this is what he's trying to do then the people listening can form their own opinion on whether or not you're doing an andy kaufman or if you're just psyched about something and you want to post what you're doing right right. like like a hundred percent of the people on fucking social media are doing it doesn't matter if it's a picture of your dog like you've post like you said earlier right right. i have plenty of pictures of my fucking dog on there or if it's you putting up a guitar video yeah what i'm doing doesn't need to be a secret because it's not good it's like like my my Instagram isn't just a platform of my impressive things. Yeah, you know yeah. I don't know. It, it's whatever. Um, 
I, it doesn't really matter. I will say this, dude. I know what it's like to have to shit on your friends for like the content of good humor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You go about it in a way that you 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 let them. You're you're you can be as as bad as it is mean. There's like that's but they're they're a great guy or you know he's. It's not like it's just. You you paint it in a way that paints them like you they're your friend and you have yeah, their back. Yeah. If this was a Netflix, it's on a public platform. If this was Joe Robinson's Netflix special and it was that bit the way it was, you know, I mean, you could see how that would. It's the same kind of thing. He has a podcast. They get like money for doing it. It's like a a borderline pro. If your friend is just going to put you out there like for, that for for generating uh, a monetary compensation, which is what they used right. it for, right? You know, I, I have the right to well, I, it, whether or not I have the right. I think that it's okay to be that way, and that's why I feel, and that's why I'm willing to just say whatever about it. And and you know, it is what it is. We should go into the second clip. This is the one we might get in trouble for. This is a part of their paid episode. I have not heard this clip. Yeah, this is new to you. Someone else told me in the comedy scene um, that the episode. That there was that they teased an episode on their paid for like because some of their episodes you have to pay to listen to or be a part of a service, um, some of them you just hear for free. And yeah, someone actually, told me, let's say this: they are on Patreon, so go and fucking listen to yeah. them and, and pay to listen to the yeah, episode. pay to listen to the episode, please support them. Yeah. Steve likes their show. Their show's not awful. I mean, it's a good show. Um, it is ironic, I will say. That I will say this about listening to their their podcast. It, it's it must do well. They must have a fan base. They're not bad. They're both funny guys. They're both smart. They're quick witted. And yeah, that snarky nature, like that that stereotypical. This is probably offensive, but like that. I don't. Is is Joe Jewish? Is that no? Robinson's not Jewish. Yeah, I guess he's not Jewish. Right. But that's he, that's like kind of his... plays like that Woody Allen kind of like he's like a normal guy mixed with that. He's maybe he's half. <laughs> <laughs> He's 50% that stereotype. <laughs> I don't know. You could see him complaining about like Larry David. You could see yeah, him. He's yeah. that character he and is, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I, a good character. It is. It would be hard to live that life, but uh, you know, he he's a he's a good he's a good they have a good show. It's odd though, man, because I do think in a way that the meanness is a little odd. There's well, a let's, guy let, let's, Oh, go ahead. Let's let's because they they did the whole bit on shitting on you without saying good things, so let's kind of give them some compliments. They are both of Rob and Joe are on ninety eight Rock regularly. Yes. So, like you were saying, if they sucked, then they wouldn't have that kind of uh, like notoriety. I yeah. Guess. Oh no. As com as com I mean, they're good. They're good talkers. They're good hosts. Rob's an amazing stand up comic. Like a lot of people say he's the funniest comedian in like the DMV area. Yeah. And he's, he's very well respected. And I think Rob is super hilarious. And if Joe tried to be, he could be just as funny. Yeah. If he wanted to be as good of a stand up comic, I think he would be amazing. They're both high, high level. I do think their shittiness and assholeness holds them back. I think that's the one missing piece. Rob is a little nicer. I, yeah, Sometimes I say, he gets a little snarky, man. He gets a, and I I like to talk shit too, but they do it in a way that I think is off putting. Maybe I, maybe it doesn't get back to them just like it doesn't get back to me. But there's something about it, and Joe does that up. It's kind of the the veil of the keyboard type thing. Yeah, too. and it, and it works. It, yeah. it definitely works. So maybe it's just who they are in what I know. And and uh, that was something Joe said. Yeah, we had a phone conversation. I'll, I'll make yeah, that yeah, part yeah. We'll, quick. We'll we'll hear all that in the audio talk. They'll this, they talk about it. This clip. This clip. Is, we should just play this one pretty much through. I, yeah. I might try to pause once or twice, but I'll try not too much. It's. it's I say that now. It's like. It's coming up on 10 minutes long where they really get into it on their paid episode and kind of talk more about the phone call and the text messages and how Joe's feeling okay, about okay. about all of it. I would say it would like when we were talking about it, we're like, do we want to put the clip on? And I was like, I know it's probably against paid for rules, so that's tough. But if they think it's good content, I mean, they've been running a successful podcast for a long time. Yeah, it's a long clip. It would be, it was hard to like isolate different parts or that would have just been so much work for a first episode. We kind of just figured we could probably play it through and then Commentary. whatever happens, happens. It's and, easy. I've never heard it. So it's me listening to it for the first time. And I think maybe to kind of cover our asses, we'll just send people over to the Rob and Joe show. 
Send them over to the page. Yeah. Patreon. It doesn't. Yeah. yeah. It, look, what we'll do is I'll try not to pause this much. If they complain, we'll remove the clip and re-release it without yeah. that. We'll just have like an insert an audio clip of this is what was said on their episode. Maybe some direct quotes and then boom, get into the re- rebuttal. So yeah, because it'll be easy. All, to, all we're doing is a call and response here. Yeah. We're not. We're not looking to no ruffle feathers. Um, I do have to take a piss. Okay, I'm gonna let him pee. Go pee. I'll talk for a second. You can. I, stay yeah, on I can mic. either pause or you can I'll keep stay talking. On mic. I'll stay on mic. All right. Yeah. Um, I'll just say in the phone conversation that I had with Joe. Um, let me think. The main things that we discussed. It was just yeah. He didn't like that my stance stayed firm and that it was hard for him to like figure out how he wanted to apologize or if like he would say he was sorry for. A hurting my feelings, which was like, well, that's not quite it, man. Like, like, it's not just that. Like, do you get why I'm mad or do you get what's different about, or like, you know, he, he was like, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. I would never want to do that. This stuff bothers me. I mean, you know, you don't know me well, but like uh, this stuff weighs on me. I hate, I hate making people upset. And this whole, like, I mean, I'm not going to say a sob story because it seemed, it seemed, um, honest, but uh, he kind of took that thing, and I kind of almost, I almost felt bad how soft he was being there about it. I was kind of expecting a little bit more of like umph. Um, and uh, I think I told him that exact thing. I was like, dude, in my world, that that does. I think you deserve to get a smack. You know, I mean, I'm not. And I was like, I'm not like threatening you with it. I'm not gonna actually hit you, but I mean, I'm just saying. Like, I think it's kind of like whatever. However, I decide to retaliate that doesn't do any like permanent serious damage like risk losing your job or anything that's serious like i think i could smack you in the face once that would that would i wouldn't have to talk shit and smack you in the face i mean that just solely that would have covered it probably um but i like to up the ante a little and uh i don't know what else we talked about it was a pretty uh civil conversation i just explained what i thought i told him some of the stuff i said before it's you know a lot of i People post their first videos in stand up. I'm learning something new. I'm not very good at it. It takes a long time to learn. I do think I've made some progress along the way that would indicate that it's not just a joke that I'm doing, um, but maybe not. And that's not up for me to, you know, I just keep trucking uh, with that. But um, okay, Steve's back. All right, I'm back. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, let's get into it then. Yes. So we had a little bit of a, of a situation where something that we said. On the main show, uh, uh, came back to uh, came back to bite me to bite you, Joe. Well, wow. so it also bites me a little bit. No, uh, no, I think it's result. You mean because he? Well, let's be well, specific. So, on the main show, um, I made fun of. This was about a month ago, right? Right. Some music two, that two three weeks ago. Another local comic, Mike. I don't even think he's a comic anymore. Mike Turpin posts. He's learning how to play the guitar, right? Who Mike was on this show years ago because he and Wendy Townsend were dating. Right, and, and I said it would break, it wouldn't work out the first time you saw them together, and then it didn't. But you know, that's true. So anyway, but I like Mike, and I friend, even said friend that, of the show, and I even said that when I was talking about how I would never post anything that horrible. Right. So he anyway, started trying to learn how to sing and play right. guitar, and he's sort of posting him his his, pro- uh, his progression. Yes. Right. And so he texted me and. Oh shit! Oh, because your phone. Yeah, I gotta keep. You gotta keep. Oh, I don't go. know that I have it anymore. Just pause for one second. Texted- I just want to say this before I forget: the Wendy thing. I just want to reiterate: our very first conversation was him telling me that oh, it'll never work between like, two people. First now, time, first time meeting him. Would you ever? Would you ever meet somebody for the first time? Look at them and their partner and tell them it'll never work. No. Meanwhile, he was dating some girl that was like half his age. He was, you know, had baggage, was nutty. I mean, all this stuff, dude. And he's going to say that to me. Like, he, it, that is the exact thing I know him for. Like, that's how he entered my life. And his whole thing was like, I know you don't know me that well. It's like, you have to remember, you're you every day of the week. And you see the way you are all the time. I know you as how you are to me. And I know you from your, whatever I've known from our time together. And a lot of it, it stems like the biggest moments or this, this kind of shit now. So of course I'm going to think you're a dick. Who the fuck says that, man? I mean, 
we should go back to playing it, but but that's an odd thing to say about somebody. Yeah, and it's first a, first time meeting, whether you're trying to be funny or not. Somebody just, who hates hurting people or like upsetting people yeah. or like triggering a negative reaction. Oh, yeah. it keeps me up at night. I mean, he made it sound like it was like his least favorite thing to do to people. Uh, okay, all right, moving on. But was quick quick to go to it. Yeah, all right. Did something like um. Hey, how'd you like to send your girl over for some dick? Something like, like, I'm going to stick it to this guy. Aggressive. I want him to, right. I want him to, I want to say something that's going to bother him. Mm-hmm. Okay. And as soon as I read that, I'm like, oh, fuck. like I knew exactly what it was about <laughs> when I saw it. And when's the last time he had texted you before that? I don't know. Five years ago or whatever. <laughs> so I texted back. I said, Mike, look, like, Hey, I said, you're a good guy. I'm sorry if that was too much, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know me, I've said this before. I don't really want to hurt people's feelings. I don't want to do that. If somebody's really bothered by something I said, I want to feel sure bad about this. Well, then he doubled down. He said something else. Oh, I just thought she might want some of this good, something like that. So I was like, okay. I said, look, Mike, people are critical of my comedy all the time. And we're public figures. We get criticized. I don't then call somebody's mother a whore. I don't do that. Right. He's like, well, you deal with this the way you do, whatever. Next thing in my phone rings, it's him. <laughs> So I'm like, <sighs> but I pick it up because I, I genuinely want to say, dude, I'm, so, I'm really sorry. I don't like, I'm not this person that's like, you know, I'm not going to back. No. What's the point? If your feelings are hurt, I would have rather have not said it. If, does that, I mean, are you the same way? Of course. It wasn't yeah, I don't important want it. to me right. to say that. So I wish I hadn't. And I genuinely felt sorry if I, if I bother him. Well, I picked him up and he was just fucking read me the riot act okay (laughs) and i was trying to downplay it and he wouldn't allow it that's fine is that true that's true yeah (laughs) yeah i told him when you were away i told him yeah Uh, i was pretty stern and i like i said i was on the way to get weighed in at an mma fight like i didn't say any of that to him at the time that's why I caught him. I had a long drive. I figured this would eat up some time. I also I also have a feeling no one's going to lie about you being intense about stuff. Yeah, no, that was very, very accurate. I mean, he brushed over, like, the reason I said the Katie thing to make the joke was because he said she showed him the videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was a, that's it's a why. It's, it's a, a callback. Fucking, yeah, it's more it's than a, just, I, I should think of something that'll piss him off. How'd you like it if I fucked your girlfriend? <laughs> Fuck you. It wasn't like just, there wasn't random low-hanging fruit. It was the highest fruit I saw, damn it. I was trying to think of something good. It was the only nugget yeah. you had. I thought it was, I thought it was all right to kind of at least acknowledge that. <laughs> but yeah, no, he's, he's pretty accurate there. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, he's pretty all right, accurate. All right. Let's just for, uh, um, oh, but he, he makes it sound like that I sent him, he makes it sound like I sent him these texts and then called him. There were, le- he, there was more to it. And as we saw on the text messages, than he led on to on the show. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was more of a back and forth, and I thought a phone call was more warranted after the nature of it. It was not as simple as the way he made it out to be on that. Like, I just called him, like, I'm over here stewing, typing a bunch of shit, and he's just trying to be like, I don't want to have an issue. I want to kind of apologize. I don't, it didn't go like that, you know? It was yeah. more, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to explain myself. I thought it was necessary to explain myself. Over the that's phone all. and not through, in a private message. Yeah, and that that's where I was at. So that yeah. more, I think, ac- is a little bit more accurate, but he's accurate too. Okay. You know, it's good. Okay. As long as everything is yeah. is from your side and his side. Yeah, every, yeah. As long as it's being I don't portrayed. have any issues with that. Okay, He's cool. like, no, that's not what you said. You said this, you said that. And honestly, I hadn't, I didn't remember what I said, right? So I said, I literally said, listen, listen to me, give me an opportunity to apologize. You know, look, if I'm, if, if you're right and I'm wrong, but you keep coming at me, there is a place where I go where I'm like, fuck this. I can't. Right. Eventually I can't keep trying to apologize because the attacks don't warrant the the indiscretion you at know some I mean? point what he says to you in anger is now worse than well, that's what, what you I kept said saying. originally i go you got to give me a chance to apologize you know i genuinely did feel bad but let me get to a place where i can feel bad and then if you don't accept it that's fine but it, only if you don't want this to reconcile only if you don't want it to reconcile if you don't want it to reconcile then you can keep yelling at me but if you do i'm telling you i'm not 
I'm not defending it. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that was the right thing to do, have a thick skin. I don't ever feel that way. Right. You know, I never feel that way. If something bothers you. I I'll, do. I'll, I know you do, Robbie. But, I mean, I care about what other people think. I don't want enemies. Although I am, I'm in between you and Robbie where I don't ask permission first so I can do what I want to do. And then I'll ask forgiveness. You usually won't, you rob, we usually won't cross the line and Robbie doesn't give a fuck and doesn't give a fuck about how they feel about him afterwards, which I, there's some merit in all of them. I'm not really trying not to. Not somebody in comedy. Okay, I got. I'll pause that there because this wasn't a comedy bit. It's not a comedy yeah, bit. Yeah, you are. not a stand up comic. I, you're running a net, and I, this is the, my biggest thing. You're running. A podcast that has at least national reach. Yeah. Mike Turpin is not a stand-up comedian. He never was at that point. At one point in time, it maybe made sense. He, it'd, be, it'd be one thing if you were going to a comedy open mic night. And do, yeah. like if you were doing like a... Um, I don't know who the fuck are some like music musical co- yeah. co- comedians. Like Bo Burnham and shit look, like that. If yeah. you were doing something like that... We'll, we'll cut it. Look, we'll we'll cut it slack because look, I've been on the show. I I'm friends enough with them in the scene and like in the Baltimore scene. I I still occasionally run shows at these yacht clubs. I haven't actually done a set in years. Yeah, one set maybe in like f- four years. I just but, I, I think it's unfair to come at it as you. Yeah, being, and Robbie. Being a honestly, Robbie can thinks what he wants. If he when he says something about me, I will give the reaction that I feel fit to him. That's the way he says he is about things, and I'm a comedian. It's whatever. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not a big deal. I get it. Um, but it's and this is the thing that pissed me off when he was having the. For, he's like he's in his head. He's like, well, I don't even remember what I said. Then I don't want your fucking apology, dummy. <laughs> Go back and listen to it, word for fuck, fucking word. Repeat it and tell me if you stand by it. That's what I did. I word for yeah. word. I put out what I did. You, I don't even remember what I said. He's like, if I was wrong, I was wrong, and then I'll be wrong or whatever. Did you go back and listen? You didn't play any part of the clip again because it's you, not no. like the shit's on tape or anything. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking recorded. Yeah, I don't want your apology if you're not if you're not sorry for the shit I'm pissed off at. I, I'm not just. I don't want an apology just because you're sorry. I'm upset. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. That, like, it's not sincere. Bend your girl that. over, dude. I mean, come on. <laughs> there's, there's some gum she can lick up somewhere. I guess. <laughs> God, dude. All, All right, right. Go on. Yeah. Gotcha, but I wasn't saying something. What I was saying was sincere, Robbie, and it wasn't <laughs> no, about I, his no, comedy. I believe you were sincere. No, yeah. no. What I mean is it was sincere when I was saying my criticism of his of his guitar playing. That's not his comedy. So that was important to him, and me belittling it hurt his feelings. I don't say because you're a comic, you need to, you need me to to tear you down where you're your most vulnerable. I don't like, I don't feel that way. But you also left no, it I open think, that he I think was people in show business, people in the public eye, need to have a thicker skin. All right, fair enough. You wouldn't Period. have accepted his apology. I but get it. He, you also left open the idea that he was playing pulling an Andy Kaufman. That's his favorite comedian. Yeah, I didn't. Which I, I still, by the way. Almost believe that he is. Well, no, nah, I'm not going because there. This because seems, going this there. seems like the Andy Kaufman thing to do, to overreact to what well. you said. You're right. No, it didn't. No, I'm not even going to imply that, it, that this is real. I will real. imply. But I what, want it to be that, because if he's doing an Andy Kaufman, then it's all oh, amazing. It's hilarious. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I root for positive endings. But But hear me out. So then a little bit later, it ended, but it didn't end like, it didn't sound like he was cool. He still sounded no, upset. No, because I've read his Facebook and Instagram posts about it since. It's not, no, it's, it's so, not over. So I emailed him. No, I think it's over. But I emailed, I mean, I texted him and I said, I'm interested in what it says, but we'll get there in a minute. Mm-hmm. I texted him and I said, dude, listen, I've been thinking about it. It's bothering me, which it is. I'm genuinely sorry. He, he came back and he said, look, I'm not going to go any further with this. I'm not trying to, nothing's going to happen to you or something like that. I'm like, well, I'm not. Now I'm like, I'm not saying it because I'm scared that you're going to... You see, now, every single time he comes back with something, it makes me say, that's not what I meant. I want to apologize, but right. I'm not afraid of whatever you might do. I just want He's also to... an MMA fighter. Well, what's he going to do, beat me up? <laughs> well, it is, that, that is sort of... That's why 
if if you're doing an Andy Kaufman, that's how you react. But if you're not doing Andy Kaufman, and yeah, fighting a woman. No, <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, hey, that's comedy, folks. That's yeah. a joke. <laughs> That's what Andy uh, Kaufman wrestled with. You you want to uh, beat up Joe Robinson? Well, yeah, I'm sure he can come and beat me up. That's what he wanted. Crazy to, person. But that would never. I would never. Which I don't think. He's, I would say what do. I meant. Regardless, I wouldn't be afraid of getting beat right. up. But once it's insinuated that that's why I'm apologizing, then I'm like, well, now I don't. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just follow where I'm coming I from. I do. I understand. Every, yeah. every time I'm called out, I want to retract it, but. I am genuinely sorry. Even I saw that you talking about the post where he said, "Hey, they called me out. Their podcast sucks," or something like when that. When did you last talk to him? Gee, it was within two weeks after the okay. episode post. Well, because a week ago, he posts. I mean, it's the same post on Instagram and Facebook. Bad news. I was recently called out on a podcast for how horribly my learning guitar and singing has been going this past year. Good news, as much as I suck, they suck harder and swallow. Okay, that was it. They. <laughs> I'm involved. You yeah, but you understand what I'm saying? Like, that, that, I don't. This is like the Fahazo thing. I'm now. So, by the way, it is funny because the first comment is that's telling them, fuck them haters. The second comment is, have you thought about using studio headphones? May help with the tone inconsistencies. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so that is uh, sort of funny that somebody. Help. Look, look, I, I, I don't, this, this I don't, guy gives me work occasionally. So now I, you're, I don't, you're I don't costing think, me money, Joe Robinson. I don't think, I think he's like, I, I have to respond to this. Right. And that was it. Yes. So that, honestly, I'm, whatever, I'm fine yeah. with it. You know, it, it, so this is where I'm leaving it. Yes. I, I'm sorry. If I had to do it over again, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't no. have done it. I wouldn't have tried to hurt his feelings. And I believe this to be the end of it. Unless it's not, and then I'll deal it's with not. it. However, if it's not, I'll deal okay. with it. Okay. Is... Is it worth ha- inviting him on the show? Uh, no, we're doing it on Patreon for a reason. Um, well, that's what we're debating this on Patreon. Yeah, I, no, I wouldn't. I don't. I don't want to ha- be in a real argument with somebody. I talked about this. I talk about it on this show. I just talked about it on the Mike O'Mara show when we were on on uh, on Tuesday. When we were on Tuesday? No, Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, yeah, check it out. It was a good episode. Yeah, I just yeah, it was good. You were good. Oh, thank you. I just talked about it. Then I don't want to be in real arguments. So if somebody's really mad at me, I mean, if it's Chris or Steve, I don't care. <laughs> right. But if it's a real person who, of course, has you don't want real that. feelings. No. Yeah, I don't no. want to. <laughs> and I like Mike, and I don't. And, yeah, and I, like I still too. think it, I'm still holding out hope this is an Andy Kaufman thing because he's going to open mics, inviting people. I mean, if he can get a bunch of people to come out and then he does this concert and then they cheer and then he gets up and says, what's wrong with you guys? You know, I'm not good at this. That's pretty funny. What if tomorrow he put a video on? He was amazing. He was just fucking with us. He was awesome. Um, look, uh, that would be awesome. <laughs> he's... Uh, I, I wish. I guess we should have played his music, but you can you can decide for yourself. He's a lot better than I would I be. Can, I know that. I can maybe end this episode with some Mike Turpin music. Is that? Do we want to do that? John? No, I don't want to do okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> if we still did best of, I would put that episode where you talked about Mike Turpin on best of. All right, that's it. Cool. <clears throat> Which maybe he meant the original. He probably meant the Wendy Townsend episode there. As far as the one where he talked about me being on the best of, I I just thought about no. I think they were talking about the your recent one, guitar playing. I don't know. You think he thought that no, would be on the he best says, of? He says, um, "Does he go on about that?" No, he just. Um, he, I think he's talking about the original. We we don't have to. I mean, there's a lot of ways that. So we had a little bit of a of a situation yeah. where oh, something yeah, that no, we said. I don't feel like fucking with on this. the main. All right, we'll just take it from the top, and when we get to that point, <laughs> yeah, we're, just we're gonna, gonna we're gonna we're gonna replay it all uh, nine and a half minutes. We're gonna do it again. All right, so we're done with uh, all that the the clips. Did you take notes? Um, you know, there's like a couple things that's like where I'm like, nah, it's not worth pausing over that. Not worth pausing over that. Um, no, I uh, I think it's odd they didn't want to play anything. I mean, that would be the greatest. Uh, that would make the, that would be funny. That would be a much funnier thing is to play it, yeah, and then them yeah. not be able to like hold back like that's, laughter and stuff. Like that's that's what I said earlier about about all this being out of context because <laughs> they they're talking shit on what you're doing, and yeah, it's probably not the greatest. It isn't the greatest, yeah. but 
It's pussyfooting, dude. It's one foot in the door. Like, did yeah. you hear the way you talked about me? Now you like want to be the guy who never hurts for people's feelings and this. Yeah. And then it's like, well, it's not. It's like the reason you don't want to apologize if I think the things I do is the reason I don't want your fucking apology yeah. because you're not sorry for anything I give a shit about. Yeah. That's it, I guess. Um, if they were going to shit on you, they should have like gone 100% I in think so. and put up. I mean, because it's not like any of the shit that you put up is is protected or private. It's on yeah. your fucking social media. So go ahead. It's public information yeah. at that point. Go ahead. Put the shit up on, on online. Once they had talked about me, once I had the conversation, maybe one of the other guys, like, like the producer, Robbie or Rob, send a message and be like, hey, we're probably going to talk about this. Uh, we're probably going to play music or... Would you want to come on as a guest and talk about it or something? Talking that would have been talking a, about you. If they were going to go so far as to like yeah, really yeah. do it up, I could see them wanting to let me know. Like I agree with the Rob side of it there. I mean, I still think it's stupid for Rob to actually think that it's a put on, especially after it. He might just trying to be ruffling the feathers. And yeah, he thinks it would be funny and cool if it was yeah. a put on. I don't know if it's what he honestly thinks. Like gun to his head, does he think there's any real chance it's some Andy Kaufman bit? I would say probably not. So no. it's not even worth talking about. I also think he's just trying to play middle ground with that. Just, or, just like, yeah, like I think he's making trying to get, light of the situation. Like, yeah, yeah I, I, I hope it's. Still. I think he might just be trying to like poke with Joe. Like he knows Joe doesn't want it to go on any further, yeah. or maybe he knows that that Joe doesn't want to be like because Joe's like the I'm not touching it with the ten foot pole type guy yeah, now. Yeah, so yeah. maybe he just brought up that spin on of it again, just to kind of direct back there. I don't know. Um it's it's funny, man, because even if even if listening to this uh, makes people think like God, like I can't believe somebody has dissected what what somebody said in a couple minutes so much or think it's like hey, everyone's different, and when you put shit out there like that, everyone's gonna think about it a different way and handle it differently. And I, in my opinion, I could do things that would be worse. You know, I could yeah. go a lot not worse. Like maybe it would be embarrassing for me. To like, like this could be even embarrassing in a way. You go about it, you make this podcast, and then if for some reason it just seems way off, way petty, whatever it sounds, you're putting yourself out there as like standing by what you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so right or wrong or whatever types of things people think of it, um, that's just the way that it that it went down in my head. And those are the reasons that it was so frustrating um to have a guy be like, Well, I'm sorry if it hurt your feelings. And then be like, and then like Robbie being like, he has thin skin. It's like, no, like this is fun. I yeah. feel better about reacting that way. It would, it would hurt me to not say something. I think it's funny and fun to like fire back when people do that shit. Yeah. And then to hear that he is so sensitive over it, like in my book, and I could be wrong because you could see it like the literal definition, I'm being sensitive. And then his reaction is a little sensitive to what I'm saying. I think he flicked a domino and then maybe because I'm an extreme intense guy, maybe I am hypersensitive in a lot of ways. So, but I don't think it's like a thin skin sensitive. I don't in that. I don't think it is either. Hyper analytical. I, 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 very or something. Very yeah, you're being very analytical of this situation. Right. And you're just you're being Mike Turpin exactly. of the That's situation. Exactly. That's just the way I handle. I don't, I don't think you're being sensitive like you said you Katie brought the video to light. Right. And you were given a call back to Katie set or to Joe from whatever the fucking uh lineup is, but you were calling back the joke like, hey, if she wants a good dick, here it is. Right. But I also think it's bullshit how they have this, like you said, national forum. They're they're on a, a pretty big podcasting mm -hmm. network. Um, they're talking shit on you and then don't even give you a chance to respond. The yeah. only thing that they can really give is secondhand response through text message. Yeah, and, and after hearing it, I mean, it's fine the way they talked about it on their show. There was nothing in, like, that clip, because I was hearing it for the first time. You told me a couple things about it. Like, you said, like, one or two things. You told me the length of it. Um, you had mentioned that Robbie had said the original con – like, I remember hearing you say that about the, like, the original conversation being on a best of, if you could have a best of. Yeah, and yeah. you told me, like – you, you sent me like a 10 second clip or something. Maybe that was it. It was, it was, or it was, it was the part. very last. I, I sent you a video of the very last like 10 seconds saying like, yes, it, it, want me to put the Mike Turpin on the best of clip. 
Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So which I think I think they're talking about your music, maybe for like it's, the yeah. year end best of. Course. Well, I'll say uh, this is another uh, uh, thing to to bring up. So like when I see that Joe Robinson is talking shit about me on his podcast, I'm like this motherfucker. I know uh, uh, thousands of people, thousands and thousands of people. Why am I being notified that this person? is now of of the only the few people that have done that in my tenure in the last whatever the fuck years since high school or at least in the past like 8 years as an adult have already been Joe Robinson he's already towards like the top of the list of people that he's not i mean there's other people but now he's circling back to it and that's what i know him by i i want to go back to originally what he said about me and Wendy you meet a couple, you don't know anything about them. Yeah. You're just going off the fact they're both comics, whatever the fuck, you're not going to work. Could you imagine if I was sitting across, how would he like it? Tell that, if, tell that if to I him said, and Katie. If I said that to him and Katie. <laughs> yeah. Because Joe's going to start thinking about it. He's like, does he really think that? And then he's like, well, well, I, I don't give a fuck what he thinks, but is Katie going to be sensitive to that? Is she going to think of it? Even if he doesn't, people will react that way. And whether or not it's Joe and Katie that might feel threatened by all the th negative things you could say about the relationship. Because I, I started thinking about that. Like when I see like 20 Instagram stories by Katie coming up and I like her. I don't want to say anything bad about yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. I, I like them both enough where... I don't want to be the person to like be the bad omen of their about to be married or married status. And I don't want to flick any dominoes that might make something that isn't there become that or even go to that level. But yeah. I could, I could, I could easily build the case. It's not what I think that much, or I, I don't really know what I think. I didn't think about it much, but there's some glaring things when you see their personality types or the fact that they're together there are enough things where you could easily play the Joe Robinson card, and how would he feel about it? He didn't like me jokingly saying what I said. What if I seriously <laughs> said some said shit? Some of what, the shit that, that actually, you actually think? that actually is real? That's or, about you. That's about your life, your identity. Like you know, I don't know, man. It's just a lot to say to somebody off the bat. I I, I still stand by that, dude. If I was out and somebody said that to me, like right now, I'm dating, and J Joe can relate to this, except she's not nearly as much younger as what he deals with, I think. I'm dating a girl that's a little bit younger than me. Yeah. Um, I'm 30 and she's 23. And if if somebody was to immediately, just off that, be like, well, it'll never work, blah, 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 yeah, blah, blah. Dude, I aid. don't know what I would do. I wouldn't do anything extremely illegal. But like, like I would definitely let them know not to fucking do, not to get in my shit like that out of nowhere, unless you want me to get in your shit like crazy. What would you do that was kind of illegal? I don't know. Well, one time I got recently, uh, the last time I was in a big thing, maybe like a couple years ago, I remember thinking like, man, like, could I spit on somebody? Is that okay? And it's I not. Think that's pretty that's bad. A, th I think that's assault. But I would. But but in, if if it were up to me, I, you couldn't go to jail for spitting on someone in person. Yeah, I think it's worthy of like a good spit. It lets them know you're willing to take it as far as they're going to take it. If you're going, like, yeah, it's yeah. not seriously damaging. It's just disrespectful. It's disrespectful. Yeah, it's as like shit. bring it the fuck on. We yeah. can do whatever you want. You can say the nastiest shit. We can throw down. And keep in mind, I'm somebody that comes from that. Like I liked doing comedy roast. I did battle yeah. rap. I like that, like, back... I mean, I don't know. In a way, it's fun. But this, I do think, was... The fun of it is fortunate, but that's not what this is about. This is about, like, somebody who doesn't understand, in my book, the thing about it that made me want to, like, really let him know was it was like he didn't understand how what he said... Well, he had forgot what he had even fucking said. Yeah. And he was wanting to talk about it. He didn't even know what he said on his own show. I mean, I only listened to it once. I knew what the fuck he said. I could remember it. it was, I was hearing it again. I'm like, yeah, I know they said that. Yeah. I knew they referenced some Colin. singer that was bad. And then he's not, he's not even sound like that. Nah. Like, I mean, I, I would dare, if it's so fucking awful and I've only been playing for just over a year, I would dare Joe. I don't know if he can play anything or do anything. He has an ugly voice like me, like where you would expect him to not be able to sing without oh, training. Dude, I've been told I have a terrible speaking voice and that I should never sing. Yeah. By a dude I was in a band with. <laughs> yeah, like he just doesn't have the voice. It would be, he could learn how to sing. He would have to turn off a lot of the characteristics and like tension yeah. that make him him, or at least that's the shit I read. It hasn't helped me a ton, but I feel like I'm 
I understand that you can get better at singing. And, and similarly, you obviously can get better at guitar playing. And, uh, I think two things that should happen. One, I should, within the next couple episodes, play a song on here live. Uh, Oh, definitely. Yeah. I I should do it. Um, you know, I think that would be a, a fun thing to do. And, um, you know, it would be a very honest portrayal of, uh, stuff. And I also would dare, Joe, if I am so fucking awful at it and it's so ungodly awful, he should be able to do it better. Are you throwing a gauntlet down? I don't know. I mean, like, like, like someone could point him in the right direction and be like, look, this song only has three cards. Look, dude, it's three different fucking fingerings. You just have to strum in basic time and sing this simple melody Mm -hmm. over top of it. Now, keep in mind, I I don't even pick songs like that. It's it's not an excuse. I wouldn't even throw the singing in. Just no, no. But that's the thing, because he's not listening to videos unless he wants to pick apart videos of just me playing guitar. That's the thing that makes it so hard. I'm learning two things that are very yeah. difficult to learn, and I'm trying to juggle them. Playing guitar, you're already juggling. <laughs> you're trying to do fingering, strumming, and you're trying to, you know, juggle multiple things yeah, at the gotta, same time. You gotta keep time, you gotta uh or keep rhythm. Some you something's got to change keep time. chords. Yes. There's and a lot of oftentimes shit going on. two different rhythms. Mm-hmm. You know, my biggest thing was I would just clunk guitar chords to the singing rhythm, and I yeah. wouldn't be able to stick unless it was just all quarter notes or eighth notes. I couldn't just stick to a strumming pattern. Yeah, like I could play like a double to, or like a quick, um, like straightforward kind of punk rocky sounding thing, but I couldn't get any sort of complex rhythm, but I could play. If you just heard me play chords, like when I would play with my friends, it would sound better. Like if they're like, just play a few chords and get into a rhythm. Yeah. Play along with the drummer. But that's the side of music I came from. I know I can do that. Okay. I know my playing is not that embarrassing that I will stand by. I think the most embarrassing aspect is my singing singing to playing. And it's, at this point, it's only about half the songs I do. Half of them are not very embarrassing for me. They're not embarrassing in many ways for me. Like, I like them enough where I don't care that much if somebody thinks they're so bad that I should be like ashamed or it's embarrassing or they would be embarrassed to do it. But there are some where I know in retrospect or you fuck up or whatever. And the thing about putting yourself out there is, is I like posting the videos, but I'm not the person who's sitting there recording it more than three times, man. Yeah. I don't do multiple takes. One take, put it out there. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, I'm the rush to post it person and move on. Once I've learned it enough, I've been playing it for a few days. I like to learn one song a week and I usually post it within a few weeks. You're comfortable enough with your performance and your ability to put it out there. And you're, you're aware of the nuance of what you're learning. You're excited as hell. You don't understand what it's like, even in an awful way. If you try to learn a song, you might understand, but he, you know, this is also a person who's just not as passionate as I am. I'm so passionate about playing guitar, even though I suck. (laughs) I love it. You're fucking Joe is just not passionate. I don't even know what he's passionate about. You're passionate about everything right. you do. I'm excited there, for it, dude. I love it. I love that I'm doing it, what I like to do. I I don't know. There's nothing you go into that you don't go 100% all the way into. Right. So, I mean, you're going to expect this type of thing for any journey of me. I mean, even like strength stuff, like I, it, it's the nature of what I do. Like, uh, the way I started stand up comedy is we were having a conversation at work a, at work. We we've worked together, um, like on and off for, I guess like eight, nine, eight, eight years or so. Uh, not something like that. 2011. So yeah, eight years. Yeah. Okay. So it was, yeah, this time of year, just over eight years ago then. Is when it was, yeah, is when yeah, you yeah. started up. Yeah, it was like early April 2011. It was the beginning of the, the yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, um, perfect. Um, well, anyway, it was like we had a conversation. I was bored at my old job and I used to write, I, I liked one-liner comedians like Stephen Wright and and Mitch Hedberg and, and Dimitri Martin. And it was easy to think of jokes like that because once yeah. you thought of the joke, it was done. So I would just enjoy brainstorming jokes and writing them in a journal. And one time at a buddy's house, it was like a bunch of like alty, like alternative. It would be the perfect audience. For the one-liners. Hipstery. Do you like, remember Elliot Swain? He was a little younger than us. It doesn't matter. Um, I think so. I think. Uh, yeah. It, if not, I remember you talking at about his house. Him. He had some friends over. They were like punky alternative, like, like into like 
that that kind of scene. Yeah. Who would enjoy, especially at that time, the more one linery, absurd, over the top yeah. Zach Galifianakis style humor. So I had these one liners. I set them in front of them, and they laughed. And I, and you know, they thought it was funny. I had some. I was like, I'm going to tell you some jokes by Stephen Wright and Mitch. Like other one liners I liked, and then I did an original set. Yeah. yeah. I think one time at a slam, uh, a poetry slam, I did it as well at the open mic sec- section. So that's the other thing. I did slam poetry. So to the tail end of slam poetry, I wanted to start doing some comedy. I told, I did the same exact thing. I, as during the open mic session, not the slam competition, I said, I'm just going to read some jokes. I really like that are one liners. And then I'm going to perform some of my own and that inspired by it. And then I was telling him that I was like, yeah, I would do it. I would like to do it. I'd like to see how it would go. I would, I'm curious, um, what would happen? And you were like, you brought up that there was a McGooby's comedian. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was a Mo- You Googled it. <laughs> McGooby's it open, ha- uh, open mic. And <laughs> I was like, all right, I'll do it. And to this day, I still apologize for <laughs> bringing Mike yeah. Turpin into the, into the, yeah. and, and, and let me just say this, Joe Robinson, I'm sorry for encouraging Mike to do comedy you know it was the social circle i strive the least in everywhere i've been the way i am and is fairly a- normal yeah in school I, I mean i was polarizing but i had a lot of friends i was and in comedy it got to the point where i had like a social dynamic but in the early stages i had more confrontations and issues in the comedy scene and then it was the same style of this like when i think of interactions with people in the rap battle scene or like uh the the gym or like the MMA gym, when somebody says something and you fire back the way I fire back, that's just the beginning, dude. We're just yeah. getting started. When somebody backs out so early and is like, whoa, why did you take it there? I'm out of my element. I'm I'm like that. I was very much like an East Coast, like boston in your face with like yeah. you know when when it's when it's open um but i don't have anything bad to say about like the closest people or whatever but when somebody crosses that line uh it doesn't matter i'm rambling now but yeah i think we kind of got we kind of got yeah. off base for like the last 15 minutes well it does yeah we're gonna wrap the episode yeah. up i guess in a, in a minute but i will i will say this um one thing that rob and joe were not oh, willing passionate to, is what we're talking about go ahead pat yeah, yeah just your it's passion passionate. for things but one thing that Rob and Joe were not willing to do, and that was to bring you on to discuss your side of the story. Could have asked me, hey, what do you, Rob Mayer could have dropped in my inbox. What would happen if you came on the show? Are you going to like wind up being super pissed? Like, what do you really think? Well, he doesn't, like, doesn't want to I would get, give him my honest opinion. He doesn't want to get in a real argument. And what, I, quite honestly, <laughs> what the fuck's going to happen? It's not Dude. like, it's not like a fight's going to exactly. break out. Exactly. That's what you're he said. Two, you're two grown men. I, dude, it, it would be like hitting a woman at that point. Like, I'm not saying, <laughs> if it was, this was a woman and I, like, even physically threatened anything, people are like, chilled, what are you doing, dude? You can't do that. I kind of feel that way because I, you know, know enough and do what I do that it's hard to just, like, he would have to really make me want to fight him to want to fight him. <laughs> He'd have to cross a million lines before I would think of that. I would smack him early. Yeah. A light smack. Smack him or spit in his just, face. Just see what he does. If he punches me from there, maybe I would do something. But a spit or a smack is about as far as I would go. I would yeah. not, but I would not smack a woman just for disrespecting, but I could smack him yeah. if, if he took it way, way further. Nothing we would go. It would have to be like, I don't know. He's not going to do it. I, I keep saying this thing too, because then he took, remember how I said that like yeah, everything yeah, yeah, sounded yeah. like a threat? So yeah, like, yeah, look, yeah. it would take a lot for me to want to choke him unconscious. Let's just say this is but all, no. this is all <laughs> hypothetical situations. Yeah. But these, these are not personal <laughs> threats towards <laughs> Joe Robinson. Yes. Uh, but the passion it, I do want to wrap that up with, with like as far as my thought on that and one of my initial things was like this is a guy who does not understand I don't think being as passionate as I am and he can't because he's not and he's not willing to be I remember thinking that about comedy his whole I'm coming back to comedy was just to tell his old fucking jokes they're hilarious I don't have a single bit as good as the bits he was using. Yeah. But he came back and he wanted to get back into it just to tell jokes that he like pretty much hated. And he fucking, he probably doesn't, he probably gets pissed that I like myself and put out the dog shit quality that I do. Cause I don't think he cares for himself very much or something. He's not passionate. And I don't think he likes a lot of the content. I wouldn't be, I don't know how proud I would be of the Robin Joe show. 
In a way, it's a a successful product. They've been doing it since the beginning, nearly, of podcasts. Um, I don't know how I would be. When I listened to it, and I heard that they were still having Chris Restivo on, and I'm like, man, they're talking. They're still talking about people that nobody even knows on the shows with no, like, loaded media. I mean, this is a paid-for episode. That was a quarter of an episode you had to pay for. Yeah. That was like 10 10 minutes. Of how long of an episode? 45 45 minutes 10 minutes was what you heard you had to pay to listen to that like oh my god i i get i see something if i was him and rob has a lot more going on for him in the comedy scene as far as like his career as a comedian he's had a couple big opportunities here and there and he's had some things happen and he does work a lot um overseas but joe I I know he's a guy who's been on the fringe of like the entertainment stuff and he has the show, but I do see if there's a lack of like something that I have a whole lot of that he does not. I don't know what it is just, and it might be for the worse. Just but personally. We don't, we don't understand those elements of each other. Like even me, yeah. I'm like, how could you say those things and then want to be Mr. Nice Guy? Yeah. I don't want to offend it. Yeah. I don't want to have a real argument. You're- what? You're foreign to him and he's foreign to you. Yeah, it's hard for me to understand the logic behind what he said. And it's very hard for him to understand, literally, that I would want to do the things that I've done or say the things I've done. I think that that's a, a something. If you're looking at like the psychological differences of it, and and I do think that a big thing to, to really make clear, and I know this is like my, my third time saying it, but I do think as like a personal level – you got to understand that people only know you for who you are in their world. Yeah. And and yeah. He might even only know me as being a touchy sensitive guy, which really isn't that far off anyway, so he, he probably knows me pretty well. But um but he doesn't know the, the only the person I see. I and I meant to say this as well. So the passionate thing um the different realities, like I only know him for who he is in mind. That's important to me to put point out there. And the context in which I know him is important. Um, also, uh, the, they are still talking about Chris Restivo, dude. I don't want to have to talk about this because I don't want to be a mean guy about Chris. Chris has always been extremely nice to me. He definitely has some issues, man. I don't know what, I don't know what, I don't know if it's just kind of like, <sighs> I would feel really bad making him the butt of a joke. He's not. I don't. I don't know. All I know. Did you hear him on the episode when he calls I, in? All I know of Chris Restivo is anytime they've ever talked. Do to they him. talk about him frequently? Um, or not much? They call him a lot. Um, it's. I wouldn't even say. It's is a it lot. a good bit? It, you, as somebody who doesn't know Chris, what do you think of it when it happens? It is, but it isn't. Um, I don't know. I also don't have like a knack for what's a good bit and what isn't a good. Do you bit. like when it when he gets brought up? Now, do you know enough about it where it's I, easy to follow along and you like it? I like when he gets fed up and he's like, "I'm fucking hanging up on you guys." Yeah. Okay. So, is, are they friendly with him enough? Do yeah. You, okay. They're, they're, they don't. They honestly, they don't like tear him apart at because it goes back just keep in mind i heard them talk about chris restivo in both episodes of me he called he was the next bit after me which was ironic they're in here shitting on me and i'm like of course the bit after me is chris restivo calling in it's so boring he eventually hangs up on him but maybe that's a running bit i mean hey they're successful enough where you know th- it's not like my guitar playing yeah. like <laughs> i was joking when i was like they suck harder and swallow i don't know I just yeah, it was yeah, not even yeah. that good of a joke that was that was low-hanging fruit of a joke but uh, you know i thought it was funny at the time enough i had you know you're about to post and you're like what am i going to type i'll type this um but anyway uh the Chris Restivo thing is odd to me. And that was also historically something I had had with them. Like I had had multiple conversations with them both. At least Rob, I know I have brought up, man, like, do you got, like, why do you guys go hard on him? Or that guy, there's something yeah. like off about him. Like, do, you know, be, be, be easy a little, but I don't know. Um, if, if Chris feels okay about it and he doesn't feel overly offended and I don't think he the gives fan, a fuck by the way yeah. that he reacts. I, I don't think he cares. It's okay. Then they're nice to him yeah. enough. Then, then yeah. it's not that bad. I just know they, they, they used to pick on him in a way I didn't like. And, but I might've just been a ba- been being a baby. Chris is probably fine with it. Um, but yeah, I noticed that that was an odd thing that I heard. And I'm like, man, of course they're shitting me on an episode where the following bit is some random fucking 
guy, all he is is a comedian who like would show up uh, at open mics and he would do like some impressions and some bad comedy. And he's made like some, you know, things that are racist or he makes some comments on Facebook, but you can tell it's coming from like, and he has a physicality. If you, if you walked into a room, you would immediately recognize him yeah. as I, I, I'm not, I'm not touching on that. Cause I don't know him. Well, I'm telling you there's okay. something dude. Like if you, I don't know what, but that's what I think. If he's listening, he's heard me say it before. Cause yeah. I've, I've, I've piped up sometimes and had to word it the same damn way. I don't know what it is. I don't know him well enough, but it's kind of like, why are you guys going out of your way to pick on and fuck with a guy who he can't help the way he is, man. That's what I think. I don't know what's up with him, but he's, he, you know, you got to chill a little bit. Let him be a little off. He can't help that shit. Yeah. You can like guide him a little and be mean and heavy handed, but, but it's not going to work just to be venomous and like make him a butt of a joke. I think yeah, they yeah, try yeah. to be fun role models about it enough. Cause they, he does look up to him. I it's, think it's not malicious shit that they, yeah, they I didn't say. like it before, but it's nothing poking, in the recent it's episodes poking was bad. fun, but it's not like, yeah. Anything that I would be like, wow, you guys went too fucking far on that one. Yeah. So I guess uh, we're, we can be done talking about that. We've done definitely a long enough of an episode, but uh, is there anything else we should say? Um, oh, yeah. I'll say this. Uh, open invitation to Rob, Rob Mayer, Joe Robinson, and Chris Restivo. Come uh, on in. Come we've... on in. God, we need guests. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't even think about that. We could yeah. have any of them as guests. That's a, that, like that was that's my biggest thing with the whole situation. You wanted it, to it, talk about maybe. Well, no, 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 no. My biggest thing is that that not so much Rob, but more so Joe is talking all this shit. And then not that he was. Re- well, I guess he was talking shit because he said your stuff was horrible. Well, but, yeah. But my biggest thing is that. They they use this closed form on their Patreon side. Which is what their... they said is what they were doing. Yeah. By the way, they teased it on a free episode. Yeah. It makes no sense, dude. And 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 <sighs> and, and they don't even they they are only gonna tell their side of the story. They don't even want to bring right. it in. The whole reason why we started this pretty much is because of the drama that's going on between you and Joe Robinson. Start, no, that's not why we. St- is that why we? Is that why you said you wanted to start a podcast? No, not really. Okay, I just no, I, I wanted say, to do it because I, I have all this fucking general. equipment and. But but it was it got it was a good timing it, it, and we like, had a content we could way, start with. Yes, yeah, exactly. exactly. You, it, it was like your first big idea. I have a vision of if anybody, if any audio engineer was to come up to me and be like, "Do you want to do a podcast?" I would be like, yes. And once I felt like I commit to a somewhat regular schedule, I like the idea of interviewing guests. I like as far as coming up on a con- for content for us to discuss at week in to week out, it takes something like this to give guaranteed content. Yeah. Like this was an easy, safe first episode because we knew we and could talk about it. That's what I meant. We had already yeah. talked about it. And that's where we got the ideas. We were discussing it. It got brought up. Because he had talked about, I don't know how it got brought up, but we were talking about it while discussing the podcast, and we were like, we should just talk about this. That would have been a good podcast. What oh, you no, said, you came, you came over, yeah, you came over to discuss the general idea, mm-hmm. and then you started going off on the Robin Joe rant, and I'm like, yeah. fuck, we should be recording this right now. I think it's because I said I found out they talked about it on a paid show or something. I think I, that that had to like, do. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it, it, this is a this will. Yeah, probably be a free one. Oh, it'll yeah, they'll be free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this will but, be a free episode. It might it might eventually. This might be the re-release of the first episode at some point. Yeah, we might have to do some editing. At, yeah, might have to edit out their sound clip. We'll see what happens. Yeah, whatever. Fuck it. But, um, Joe Robinson. Yeah. Open forum. Yeah. You're welcome. I want him to learn. I want him to shame me, dude. If he only had to learn one song, I'm not even kidding. There's a chance he could embarrass me. If he just took it upon himself to say, you know what? I'm going to practice this chord progression for two weeks. While I'm practicing it, I'm going to practice singing it in my car. Then after two weeks of just playing that one rhythm with this one simple Chord progression, three chords. It'd be very easy to learn. Am yeah. I right? As yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. If you took the time to perfect one thing instead of learning a bunch of different stuff, 
you can get pretty good at it at a very, at a fairly quick yeah. pace. And especially if you're in competition with a noob that you think is so awful, it's hilarious that they're a noob at guitar and that bad. Like if, if that's the context in which you're having a battle, like I think he could win. I think he really could embarrass me. If he just practiced one song and maybe like practice singing and maybe, you know, whatever's off, you just start polishing it up a bit and you start getting some help. Maybe some friends are like, you got to just, slow your strumming hand down. You got to do yeah, this. Yeah. Try singing this way. Try, you know, just, pl just doing the rhythm and singing along. Like I would even help him. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> the olive branch. So, yeah. all right. All right. So, so four weeks from the release of this episode, whatever it is, Joe Robinson, you got four <laughs> weeks to learn one single song and sing it. it. No, he won't do not it. Not at all. I wish He's, he, that would be fun. he won't fucking respond to this. He'll respond. I don't know if they'll actually make a thing of it. They pr maybe. I mean, I think Robbie would. Th if I had to guess, I would think Rob would like to see it out as an. All At this point, he just gets to be the audience member yeah. because nothing he said outside of him trying to make it seem like it's like a bit, which I, you know, I don't, I don't believe he really believes, and he didn't say anything that's really. I don't care what Rob said. He was fine. Robbie, I don't have anything with. I think Robbie. Rob likes it because it's good. He gets to be an audience member, mm -hmm. and he knows it's exciting. Robbie thinks it's good. He already said at least one episode with me was on the best of. It seemed like he wanted to play the music. Rob wanted me to come on the show. Joe is the one that's going to be maybe the least, but I said a lot about him, dude. I mean, I questioned his pot. Pa I want to reiterate what all I did in <laughs> yeah, this episode. Bring it, bring it back. I said he doesn't have any passion. I said that, I mean, I basically said I could say a lot of things about him and his current thing. I said stuff about his last relationship, about like, you know, yeah. in, in conjunction to the Wendy thing. Um, I said that he, when he came back to, to, I mean, I said he probably doesn't like what he does very much at all, even the good stuff. I think he probably has Comedy a very, wise. whatever. Yeah, dude, he, there's no, nobody likes to perform jokes they wanted to stop doing comedy over. He's like, I hate comedy so much. I'm never going to do it again. I hate these jokes. I hate this, but whatever. That's not true. I don't know for sure that he was thinking that. But then he stops for a while and he comes back and he's like, hey, I'm still, uh, you know, it's a joke. Uh, remember onesies or sn it's like pre snuggy onesie thingies? He had that joke. It's like wearing a Pop Tart. You, you know what I'm talking I, about? I don't know. I got no clue. He was still doing jokes that like people didn't even get because they were referencing things like people got them. But yeah, it was an old ref. I didn't get it. I mean, I didn't understand it at the time. Um, like I got it, but I didn't know what he was talking about. And, uh, Anyway, when you come back to comedy and you aren't writing new stuff, which maybe he really was, but I don't think he did. Um, I don't think he likes his comedy much. I think he probably is not a, I don't know what he likes. He's not a very, that's not the side of the world he sees. You know, like when you look at how you see the situation, Rob, def, I mean, Joe definitely sees, look at the way he saw, like you see me do guitar and you're like, man, that takes balls. Rob sees it and he's like, well, he's in the, I mean, and you Joe know, just shits on and it. Rob's a comedian. He still has jokes to make about it. It's bad. But, but Joe like sees things and that's his normal. He's like, dude, I wasn't trying to be, I mean, why are you upset? I don't like your music. Yeah. That's the view Joe has on most things. I think, I think he's a, uh, sees that side of the, yeah, something. A little cynical, a little critical, um, and uh, a little bit of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to end it no, there. All right, all right cool.